everyone. Welcome back to Dropped Frames. Zeke is out this week. He's taking a vacation. Where where was Zeke going, Code? Do we know? Did he say where he was going? Probably back to the third level of hell. Maybe the fourth. Is <laughs> Maybe so. Something like the cozy that. one. Yeah, yeah. The the cozy one. Exactly. We got yeah, Max Million, dude, there. filling in for him. Hi. How What's you doing, up, Max? I know it's Pretty early good. for you. Thanks for being here. I always feel bad yeah, whenever we ask West Coasters to be on the show because it's like you got to be here at 10 a.m. Sorry. I'm like, there's a 10 a.m. now. Okay. <laughs> and you're late night. What what time did you end up streaming till last night? Because you you are a nocturnal um, streamer. So un, un, unfortunately, that last night was a Yo video games night. So we have the guys over for like the weekend. And I think I looked at the stream time and we were streaming for five to six hours at 2 a.m. And I was like, it should be a good time to end. And then I got on a good old fighting game grind session wow. with Steve, and it ended at 5.15 in the morning. So, great. <laughs> I'm doing great. So, again, thanks for being here, Max. We appreciate you waking up early to join us. That's a nightmare scenario. Uh, you guys were playing, what were you playing last night? A bunch of fighting games and stuff like that? That was a DNF duel. This okay. A All right. We're gonna new, the that. new hot shit right now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll still, definitely... still on Troubleshooter? Uh, yeah, I'm sticking with that character for a bit. There's enough to him where it's like, I'm learning something every day. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Very eager to talk about that. I do want to mention a little bit about E3 because you were on, you were on the show floor this year and we haven't really talked yeah. to anyone that was, that was doing that. What, what was the, the, how was it? Was it, did Keeley do like an okay job with the, the small area that he had or how'd that yeah, all go? I, I think he did like. He were, uh, Jeff essentially created like a very like posh version of like an E3 backroom. When you go to E3, like if you know industry folk or if you know people that work at these companies, they're immediately like, here, come back here and, and try this stuff. Right. Yeah. So they'll you'll go to like their back room and where media is essentially allowed and they'll they'll like show you stuff on games. That's what it felt like for everything where you'd go to like a back room and they have snacks and drinks and they'd try to like booze you up, you know, about, about their games and stuff. And Jeff created an entire event that was that instead it was, instead of just being one specific publisher, it was like everybody, you know, at the same time. So we're talking like, there was like an open bar. There was like restaurants around that were just giving food for free. Nice. Uh, it was, it was very, it was very nice, but at the same time, it was also like specifically limited. There wasn't only street fighter was obviously the big game there that a lot of people were looking forward and wanting to play the most. And it was, it was fantastic to be a part of it, but it was very exclusive. Like I couldn't even get any of my friends or associates that are close to me to even go there for a while. Huh. There was nobody that was direct, like fighting game, like absolute direct, like people immediately in the fighting game community that I really recognized. And I had to be introduced to some people. I was like, wow, am I like the only big fighting game person that's here checking this stuff out? And the only reason I was, uh, was because I had been working with the the PR agency that essentially ran the event. Mm. Uh, they knew who I was. So they were immediately like, oh, let's get him on board. So I was lucky enough to be invited myself uh, because it was it was really specifically like just a lot of like content content creators as well as uh, like big sites like IGN and stuff like that. Yeah, I know like I, IGN was there. I know uh, Easy Allies, kind of funny games were all there. Jesse Cox, friend of the show, got invited. I don't know if you happened to run into him there or, or know Jesse at all. Uh, but it did I think seem... I, there, was, there was a lot of people roaming around, yeah. Yeah, it, it did seem fairly uh, restrictive in, in terms of who was actually invited, just in the amount of people that we saw in all the, yeah. the footage that I saw uh, that were there. It seemed very much like it was a dry run this year. Like this, yeah. this was the first time where it was like yeah. he wasn't doing anything, so it was almost like... Jeff was dipping his toe in the water. Like, can we make this work? He was teasing pictures on Twitter of the physical registration location, stuff like that. Yes. So I think he yeah. was, he was and kind of like hinting to people like we could turn this into what you guys were thinking. It 100%. Would be. Yeah. And he, I, I think he'll like do that. that. I think he'll do that for the next year as well. It's just ESA has already come out and said like, yeah, E3 is actually coming back next year. And I, I'm right. fairly sure Jeff is going to try to also in tandem do his own thing. Um, but we'll see. Like next year is going to have a lot of like crazy exciting stuff in general around the E3 time frame that is already like lining up. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two would likely be at next E3, so right I mean, that'll be that'll be pretty damn exciting. <clears throat> Much less what Capcom and Bandai Namco and all those companies have to to offer. But I mean, I'm just looking forward to it. E3, like I've been going since 2001, outside of a couple years when it switched to like Santa Monica. 
uh this it's, it's been a big part of like every one of my summers is going here and meeting people that are in the industry again it was nice to see some people from capcom uh again and it's been a long time for me because of covid and stuff like that uh but it was cool like everyone was covid compliant i think uh, almost everybody was wearing masks like a ton of people were uh i think you could only get in if you were uh double vaxxed and stuff like that so there's a lot of really specific like jeff's just like i'm just not doing this if it's unsafe for people sorry yeah so he was able to make his own event what he wanted which was kind of neat so i appreciated it do you think uh like e3 keely versus keely is that the future like are they gonna butt heads not because he's pretty vocal on twitter about you know anytime yeah. e3 has a bad he's day trolly. Yeah, he gets he's, out he's not just vocal he's trolly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah I, I think i think he i think he is kind of going for the throat in some situations i don't think summer games fest is going anywhere even sure if e3 comes back so um and i think that's good there needs to be competition like e3 has been kind of shitty like behind the scenes for a very long time mm -hmm. and it and it there was some very big stuff like the the crazy information leak that happened to a lot of people uh right, was yeah. absolutely terrible it's just like this is this is this is just awful like you guys suck and then COVID hit you know and so there's been nothing and they almost went out of business because it's e3 is the one thing that actually makes them money so i i don't think i think i think just naturally like publishers will, will flock back and nintendo will come back and have a big ass booth you know just like usual i don't yeah. think it'll be as big next year but there will there will likely be you know capcom will have some big extravagant or shit for whatever game that they have and that's neat that's like the spectacle stuff that i just really love about it you know it's it's video game christmas outside of you know not being christmas yeah exactly exactly do you uh where, where do you sit on e3 being open to the public do you like when it's closed doors? Do you do you like where it's more uh, PAX oriented? Where, this is an important question to ask Max because he's actually one of the people that gets behind the closed doors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah. what from your perspective, what do you think? Um, to me, I thought they did a pretty good job at the last couple of E3s pre-COVID, where in the first two days, like the first two hours, the LA Convention Center was locked off to the public, and you just essentially got to roam around with, with if you just had media access. So. That part was good because that's where I was able to get the most conversations with with devs regarding stuff. Um, I mean, I uh, I'm a I'm a weird one where even when I was like technically getting access through my my employment or or friends or anything like that when I was technically like public, uh, even I preferred not to have as many people because man, the the only issue when it is open to the public is that you get a sort of a Comic Con syndrome. Where people start fishing for like giveaways like swag items and stuff Got it, okay they, and they're they're trying to literally sell it right outside the uh they're trying to sell it like right outside the place that it was at people are like grifting items like outside e3 or grifting oh, really? passes and stuff they would like yes. go in buy that something means... or get something free and then walk outside and try to sell it yes or try to sell their their badges and stuff like that oh the badge stuff um, yeah that happens at pax all the time <clears throat> yeah so yeah. I don't know. It's like it, it turns into a little bit of a Comic Con situation at that point, and it's kind of like, oh Jesus, there's just so many people. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of, I, I obviously like the one-to-one -one developer interaction and stuff. It, this stuff that happens at E3 that like just like never happens, you know. Like I, I was roaming Bethesda's booth just looking at people playing Doom Eternal before it was out. Sure. And I was like, damn, this game looks crazy. And all of a sudden, it was either like Marty or one of the lead directors of Doom One runs up to me. He's like, dude, I watched your playthrough. You want to go play the new game? And I was like, holy sh! Uh, I I tried to get an appointment, but they said I couldn't. They're like, nah, fuck that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he just like grabbed me and That's I always nice. played Doom at like 120 FPS. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. So it's stuff like that. That's just the, the most incredibly cool thing. Like, I can't believe this is my life. Yeah, yeah. I I guess an E3 like that does facilitate it where they can, you know, see a Maximilian dude. Even though you're a little bit taller, you, you tower over people, so that might happen in public too. Let me get a ladder. I'll go talk to Max. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you? I, I think I read or I saw you going down an escalator and it took a couple of seconds before I think we were actually eye level as you were going down. What? what how tall are you? Uh, six, three, six, four. Okay. We're the, maybe, we're the, maybe it's because you're you were at the time you were so skinny. Maybe I just thought you were super, super tall. You were probably uh, feeling dwarfed by his stardom. That might also <laughs> be it, too. Yeah. That accounts Absolute for like a horse solid okay. two, to, it's true. two to three it's inches. It's true. Yeah, and this was you know. this was before you were on the show, so I would there was some starstruck there. 
Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, it was like it was like TwitchCon 2014 or something like that. Maybe it might have been the first one. It was in San Diego, so it it was definitely a while back. I don't it was know. A while back, yeah, yeah, that was 2014, 2015, something like that. I just remember you being very tall, and I was like, "Damn, Max is tall." Anyways, anyways, very tall and very frail. Yes, yeah, you've you've put on some. Oh, you're changing uh, that. Some muscles now. <laughs> we're changing that. We're working. Yeah, we're exactly. Working on that shit. <laughs> Woo, let's go. Yeah, we're, <laughs> well, slowly but surely. Well, sorry, sorry for, for being me. late, by the way. That's we were just literally talking about uh, their workout regime uh, <laughs> before we got going. So that's on uh, that's on me for not getting the show started. I was getting it, workout tips. It's true. That's true. Uh, Street Fighter Five uh, obviously had some rough start to it. We got Street Fighter Six coming out. Me and Co are kind of in the realm of wanting to play it now i think with guilty gear dude i got, easing I us got into my, it. my yeah. cheap box controller ready to go that's right we got him I'm a hip saving box. it for street fighter Ooh, 6 cool. yeah, yeah i'm so excited he gets That'll be an interesting that. interesting experience yeah yeah it it takes it's a it's a process do you think uh, street fighter 6 like is it gonna be from what you've played are schmucks like me and co gonna be able to get in there sorry uh and and have some fun and and be competitive or is it just yeah we're gonna well, get wiped i i think there's already things in it that are setting up for anybody Absolutely. to have fun in a different way that street fighter has had before yeah and to be to be frank like the most important thing to to get people into a fighting game is making a good game number one is is putting enough stuff in it that will actually draw an audience that'll get people excited to want to jump in and play or learn characters um i tell this all the time like directly with gameplay isn't usually the thing that'll make a fighting game explode with casuals mm. usually you need a game that has great visuals great content and a great roster if those things happen casual people are going to show up like crazy and the nicest part about street fighter 6 is that the game seems to be setting up for most of that we don't we don't see the whole roster yet but it definitely has a visual style that's much different and is evolving from street fighter in the past and it is going to have the content that a lot of people have been looking for. It's got like a Shenmue style story mode where you go around yeah. and visit the old the old masters of Street Fighter, which are like the world warriors. Yeah. And you like learn, you make your own character seemingly, you learn moves from them, you travel from like area to area and you get in fights. That's the, that's the kind of stuff that we saw before. And that just sounds like a really cool, like, damn, that's never, that's never actually been in Street Fighter before. Technically it was an alpha three, like a little bit. But they're making like a proper story out of it. And when I asked the devs about that, um, one of my biggest gripes about Mortal Kombat story modes is that they're amazing, right? They're really cool. But whenever other devs try to do it, it's just not as good. Like NRS is so great at doing like Injustice and MK story modes. Um, and whenever Capcom has tried to do it, it's just not, it, it's, it's just crappy. Like yeah, it's just, yeah. The story sucks. Like the fights are short. Like I don't get it, man. We're barely playing this. Um, in this game, the devs told me specifically that they want their story mode to be a way to teach people how to play fighting games and teach people eventually how to play Street Fighter VI. So that is like the big goal is to like ease people like a, like a normal video game, right? In God of War, you just don't throw people against Valkyries at the start. There's a nice <laughs> little progression of how you play the game and how to utilize all the game's mechanics, but do it in a story setting. Um, and luckily that's something that the devs specifically said, like, we want to teach people how to play our game through our story mode. I'm like, thank God. That's good to hear. Like, thank that's like what I've been asking for, for years. Like, how about we use a cinematic story mode in some way just to get people better at your game and move them along your mechanics and your engine the same way that any other game does. And for some reason, fighting games just don't do this. Yeah. So I was really excited when I heard that. That means that people will actually be able to get into the game in ways that were different from before. Well, not not only all of that. Also, that story mode is almost attracting people that may not even be into fighting games to possibly ease them sure. into the genre as a whole. So, like, not not sure. only just learning Street Fighter Six, but I know when I saw that originally, I was like, "What is this? Is it going to be the kind of thing where we're going to be making our own characters and able to like fight them versus other people's create you know custom characters? Where it's like you don't possibly need to something from a roster, but it's like you you RPG style build up a character." You learn the move set of that character that that's you in the game, and then you get to take you and fight it versus other people's use, and you know, kind of like <laughs> come up like that. That's that's a, a very cool concept, especially if you've spent hours and hours like methodically working with this character. He has his own story. He's got his own moves that you've handpicked each one of them. Like that could be really cool. And again, go for people that aren't even fighting game fans in a lot of ways. Yeah. And that's what it seems like they are they are going for. We haven't we've only gotten so much information, and they're they're talking a bit about it. 
But we've only seen so much on what the uh, the what the world tour mode is, which is the big offline offerings of the game. And yeah, it seemingly is like that. Like you make your, it looks like it's a creative character. It looks like you're going to go around and learn moves and stuff like that. You approach it like it's a Shenmue style like world where you go around and like talk to characters and just fight them, like just get into street fights. And it's another like weird custom looking character that you can get into a street fight with. It isn't just Ryu or Guile or something like that. It is other characters that w work in this world. I don't think that's going to be um, multiplayer, like multiplayer other characters in the world, but. There was already uh, a big online functionality called the Battle Hub, which is no kidding, like PlayStation Home version of Street Fighter, where it looks like you take your creative character straight to online, and that's like your avatar. So the hope oh, is cool. that, well, man, there should just be like a goofball fun mode where you can fight your custom character with their moves and stats and stuff against other people's fun characters. Like, And then if you want to get to the actual ranked part, it's the raw Street Fighter experience, you know? So we've already seen a lot of stuff that involves like character customization and shops and things like that in these modes. And it really is looking that way where it's like, man, you get to make your own personal fighter in some way and give them moves potentially from like other characters. Could be cool. I, I like the, uh, the look of it. I think, uh, I think it'll be enough. Like the reason Guilty Gear, I think was so fun to play was because the look of it, right? You, you were correct. Sure. You were saying like the graphics, it's flashy. You have the super moves. Everything's crazy. That's what it's brought you the, in at first. Yeah. It's what got me in at first. Uh, and, and this seems like it's, it's having the same effect that it's very flashy and, and they're kind of going that route. I love the character models and all that. How does the, uh, yeah. the general like fighting game community feel? You, you're our conduit here at drop frames into the FGC. So it, we have game no correspondent. Idea. Yeah. Our fighting game correspondent. That's exactly right. Unofficial. How are they so, <laughs> feeling about what they saw and what and what you play? This is some of your footage right here as well. So if people want to watch it, yeah. definitely go check out the, your YouTube channel for all that. But yeah, how's I, the FTC? I was very, I was very lucky. I probably spent a total of like five six hours playing the Damn. game over the two days that I went. And and I'm not even kidding you. Maybe three and a half of those hours were actually spent fighting the director and producer of the game. That's awesome. Um, so I got to they see just have, like, what running like, commentary during it, like what they were thinking no. and how they did stuff. And <laughs> well, well, that, that was the idea is that I didn't want to just play like anybody else that was just playing the game and just like hitting buttons and figuring stuff out. I was like, there's a lot of mechanics in this game, like almost like a daunting amount at the start of like, you can do what you can do, what you can do, what like characters can characters can do way more stuff than they could before, which is actually a, a very good thing because it was a big issue with Street Fighter five. Yeah. So I went to the devs and I was like, can I play you guys? Because I want to see how the devs are intending this game to be played. Right, they're not going to to eventually play the game like a previous game, or try to play it like a Street Fighter Four, or play it like a Street Fighter Three Third Strike. Now the devs are going to start using mechanics in ways that they design them for. So I'm like, yeah, what is your guys' intention? Uh, uh, how do I use this stuff? And yeah, as soon as I fought them, I saw tons of things that no person was doing, and it made the game super fascinating. Because even at the start, like I wasn't seeing that, and I was like, ah, it feels okay. And then as soon as I played the devs, I was like, oh, oh, whoa, oh oh whoa this is fun like some they were setting up for these moments and situations that are really specific and then once these mechanics come into place it okay i see what they're going for right yeah. is that going to be the way the game eventually devol devolves into i can't say but at least i have an idea of what the devs are aiming for like what their goal is with all these mechanics and yeah it's different it's it's a lot different than when street fighter has been before while also feeling very street fighter-y and it, it becomes a bit difficult to explain what is this game like? Like, is it like Street Fighter 4? Is it like Street Fighter 5? Is it like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike? It's got parrying. Is it just going to be Third Strike all over again? And I'm like, I, it, it's really hard to explain, like, in, in layman's terms, what it's like. And then I, I eventually came to this conclusion. I'm like, this game is like Resident Evil 2 Remake. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you know when you play Go RE2? On. There's a big guy that follows <laughs> you, know you around. You know when you play RE2 Remake? <laughs> And and you play RE2 remake and you're like, this is a this is a brand new, crazy different game, but it's still RE2, right? You you still feel like you're playing the the meat of RE2 there, but the gameplay experience is completely different. That's what Street Fighter 6 is like. You feel like you're That's still much. playing something that is absolutely tried and true Street Fighter, but in the way and fashion that you're playing it, just like RE2 remake, completely new experience, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's that's how I had to like break it down for some people. So if you if you like that aspect of it where you're getting something brand new that's the thing that the fgc is very much excited about right 
because a, a lot of people ended up uh street fighter 5's gameplay was very polarizing for many people a fine game like nothing really wrong with street fighter 5's gameplay it's just that it's executing something very specific when people play it that some folks just don't like so i i would say that the overall impression from the fgc in general yeah over many years has been that capcom fighting games have kind of been a joke right it's kind of been like, man, they're just screwing up so many different ways ever since 2016 to Marvel Infinite to weird Street Fighter DLC issues to issues with Street Fighter V. And man, it's just, it would just be so nice if these guys can just do something that'll make people happy. This game, from all of its showing so far, is making a lot of people happy. And uh, that the impression now is that everyone's waiting for Street Fighter VI, where it's like, oh, this game's going to be, this game's going to be dope, right? It, we don't know if it's going to be the greatest game in the world, but right now it's, essentially fixing and learning from a lot of the the past that street fighter 5 had issues with yeah yeah well i mean Dude, the new paint system is just it's just nice to watch it reminds me of guilty gear where it's like the, the, you feel like you're watching an anime sometimes where it all kind of flows together so well yeah yeah really wild and you're this up. this footage doesn't really do the game justice bitrate doesn't do the game justice in say, yeah in person it looks really good well, uh, there's you, there's some crazy stuff where it's like no kidding uh if, if you're in windscreens and stuff like that or during supers you literally see the characters muscles flexing and stuff when they do shit and that's like what they said the re engine which is the first time this is the first fighting game made in the re engine uh that they were, they were able to utilize a lot of that crazy visual stuff yeah it looks great definitely if you have the the means to do so go watch some 4k footage of it because it Stuff like that right there, like Co saying the ink that fills in, it looks uh, the paint, looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Looks really good. Um animations are also just so fluid. The connectivity they're ridiculous. and the like, dude, the animations in insane. In in motion, like I can't even believe how much bonus personality they put into characters. So the the thing I can say is that th this game oozes like passion. In a lot of t in a lot of situations with previous Capcom fighting games like Street Fighter V in the first few seasons and like MVCI, it felt like the game was very constricted by a budget. Where it's like we can't add that cool stuff; it'll cost money. We can't do that; it'll cost money. If we really wanted to add like some interesting intro or something, what, what, what's the net return here? Okay, how many more copies are we going to sell if we add these like flares and all these cool things that people want? Like, what's that actually going to get us? That's what it felt like was happening to Capcom fighting games for like a long time. And this game feels the complete opposite. Like there's, <clears throat> there's a ton of like so many crazy nods and references that are thrown throughout characters' moves and gameplay and stuff that it's just like, what? Like the, the faces at the character versus screen, if you move around the joystick, their, their expressions change. So they go, oh, wow. and they go, ah, and they go, ooh, ah, <laughs> and you can, you can rotate them and stuff like, why would you need to do that? Like why? I definitely saw just, when when someone was selecting their character earlier. You could tell somebody was just doing the circle because the guy was like, <laughs> "That's kind of fun." Exactly. Yeah. And there's like an interesting like burnout state of this game because there's a meter where if you use too much of a meter, you enter a burnout state, which is your character's like in a weakness state, mm. but you can still play. Mm. Most characters when they're in their burnout state that are like OG characters like Ryu and Chun Li, <clears throat> their poses revert back to their Street Fighter Two default poses. So instead of chun li being in her new like fancy like kung fu pose she goes back to her old chun li sf2 pose huh like it's like she's reverted back because she doesn't have access to all the mechanics for a bit she's just like back to her street fighter 2 version of her character I'm that's like clever. that's such a nice little nod yeah like a, like a visual reference because you're missing mechanics when you're in burnout mode that's great yeah did they ever talk of is is the new paint system which every character seems to have and i remember seeing in like a, an interview or an faq they did with the devs that they actually called it the paint system is there some kind of is is that just there to look good? Like what what is what is the paint system exactly? It's they talk about the, that the, at all? Yeah, the visual of the paint system is is attached to the uh, the drive mechanic, and the the drive meter. If you look at the top of the life bars, there's like green life bars below that recover um like automatically, and if you attack, so that's that's called the drive system. It's called like drive impact, drive parry, you know, drive rush. These different things that you can use the drive system for um and whenever you do them yeah they, it, each character has their own unique like graffiti ink splash i'm not even huh. kidding you when you get a ko with a super uh i think we might have just seen it a, a giant like wall graffiti art comes across the back of the screen and then zoops around as like a transition and stuff it's incredibly cool like that right there 
I don't know if that's going to be customized for characters, but it feels like that's definitely an opportunity to do so where you can like get like customized graffiti art per character. Hmm. But that's that's the big thing of the game, like the ink splash, like the artistic preference of characters. Ryu is obviously like Akira Kurosawa in many ways, while some characters are very much like street feeling. Sure. Um, there's a lot of like urban hip hop flavor throughout the entire game. And that's especially apparent in like the music. Uh, and if that's, I can, I can say for one thing, uh, Street Fighter has been lacking identity for a while. Where Street Fighter V was just not Street Fighter IV. <laughs> and it was, it was a very weird game where it was like, what, what is the identity of this game? Like previous Street Fighters were always doing something. Street Fighter II was Street Fighter II. That was World Warrior is a big game. And then Street Fighter Alpha, what was that? Oh, it's Street Fighter II, but it's like anime with new characters. Okay, <laughs> cool. And then Street Fighter 3 essentially had like a lot of urban hip hop feel throughout all of it with beautiful animations. Street Fighter 4 was a return to Street Fighter 2. And then what was SF5? It was just SF4 again. So they, there wasn't much identity to the game because it had a very rushed development. Yeah. Um, this game's been in development for a long time and it's actually like it, it's returning to the streets. And that's the nice part about like the the theming of the game is that it really has a fantastic like feel to like the UI and the identity. I love it, man. So real quick, I just noticed that Jamie, uh, he he drinks, and I'm guessing that's like a, a self buff. It looked yes. like he got to the point where all of a sudden his hair just he just said he lets like, his hair down, it, man. Like yes. lets his hair down. Is that is that like max yes. power mode? Is when his hair is all the way yes. Just flowing? He is, <laughs> that's great. He is, a, he is a, a drunken like kung fu. So his his gimmick is that he is like a, uh, a, a a drunken kung fu character, right? Drunken boxing. So, but he he loves hip hop and he likes uh, dancing, right? So he's like a drunken kung fu break dancer. And yes, he, in nice. certain moves, he'll drink at the end of it, and it levels him up four power levels. And when he gets to the fourth power level, it like all of his hair comes out, his, his clothes become loose, his face becomes red, and he gets like different characters all the way through, like different different moves all the way through. And what's even crazier is just a few rounds ago, it looks like he won in his max four state, and he had a completely more like chill animation when he won, yes. where his like hands were droopy and stuff. So it's like, yes. does he have different animation states for like each level? Like, I don't oh, know if it's Lord, each dude. level because the, the only one that really changes when he's in level four, what he gets is access to is completely different moves, and he gets like more more red, like his face gets redder and yeah. redder, yeah. and he has different lines of dialogue. Uh, you'll notice like when he walks around, just his walk cycle is him like 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 jauntying like he's dancing. So even even oh. when he's walking back and forward and doing everything, it's like he's moving to a like a beat of some kind. It's in he's, and he's crazy fun. The character has I'm looking at this character's move list because he has all these like drink modified moves where it's like this move now turns into this In level two drink. You now get this, this and this In level four drink. You're unleashed and you get this, this, this and this. It's like. I'm like scrolling down this. He's got so much stuff. This is crazy. <laughs> this is so cool. So that, that's that's actually very welcome because in Street Fighter Five, like a lot of characters move lists were brutally short. Like mm. they really simplified characters down to a point where it's like it, it was always hard to find like an identity for a character in some way because there were so so few things you could do. Sure, sure. Uh, Max, am I going to have a, a character that has a dolphin that can go across the screen and, and do super simple is am i stuck with guile what am i doing <laughs> there What's well uh, yeah if you like charge characters right guile yeah. might might be your might be your main right um he looks, I, he looks there great. Is, I like his, his design yeah, there's a lot of like the the drive i don't know if you played street fighter 4 but there's like a focus attack sure um the drive impact in this game is pretty much a focus attack but better okay. and faster so and it'll plow through moves and you have to be ready like that that's it right there you saw when chun Li with the big splash oh right, right that's when characters essentially plow through and have two hits of armor that just go through moves and it seems pretty hard to deal with at the start but i you'll be able to react to it eventually all that kind of stuff is like i call them like momentum disruptors the game is a very like big like tug at tug of war kind of game where it's like give space here take space back give space here take space back and with the core mechanics and all you do to, to do that is just like press the uh the heavies heavy punch heavy kick that's it oh that's simple. So none of like okay. the actual yeah yeah none of the actual um like input specifics are really difficult and the game does have a uh a what's it called i forget what mode it's called but it's called like 
new control mode or something like that instead of instead of like classic their new control mode is that you don't have to do the motions for special moves you can just do nice. like forward and a button and you get fireball or you get dragon punch yeah the big caveat to that is that um it's a six button game right street fighter street fighter is traditionally a six button fighting game you lose three buttons so you get light medium heavy but all your special moves are super easy to do at that point Hmm. okay nice yeah seems like it'll be and it was then it was going very well for people that were just like casual street fighter fans having like a really fun time seeing all this cool stuff happening i'm like that's important right you should just let there there should be let everyone do cool stuff but there clearly should be like an upgrade path to to doing even more cool stuff but it's going to be a bit harder and that's what the classic scheme is for which is like yeah the manual inputs you get six attacks that kind of stuff yeah that makes for that that complete as a fighting game veteran i'm completely fine with that you know let people do flashy shit and have fun as long as there's an upgrade path there's a reason to evolve to something else that will eventually allow you to have like full control over your character yeah absolutely uh my chat was was <laughs> clue man is jp a returning character or is that a brand new character in, in the leaked list uh that that was out there there's a character named jp is that i don't yeah. know my street fighter deep deep lore is that a new one or is that a returning totally character? New. Okay, totally yeah. new. Gotcha. There, there, and there's, a, a per, according to that list, there's like a very large, like one third of the roster that's completely new. Well, that's exciting. And wow. that seems to be because like Shadowloo, you know, like the old Vega Bison, like old Shadowloo is kind of gone. We are, we are, we are, after 23 years, we're finally past Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. All, all the Story other Street wise. Fighter games that have come out since then, have been pre Street Fighter three, so now Ryu and Ken are in their forties, right? <laughs> Chun Li, like these characters are like in their early forties. They're they're the masters at this point of 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 the new gen, which is like uh, Luke and then Jamie. They're like the newer generation Street Fighters. Got it. What'd be cool? That leak list looked really really in, uh, interesting. I guess with all the the characters. Certainly did. It sucked the boy for Capcom, Ken. but yeah. Look what they've done to my boy. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. I was a Ken guy growing up, so like I'm, I'm, I'm. He's, I'm probably gonna return to him. Yeah. Oh my. Lord. Yeah, my favorite. Oh my lord. My favorite Street Fighter character is Ken, so I'm very. Yeah. I'm very confused and perplexed, and just wondering, like, why did they have to? Why did? Why did she have to take the kids, man? <laughs> like, sort of story that he's got. So I'm, I, I'm super curious where they're gonna be going with that, because once again, it's a, it's a much different direction than usual. <laughs> it's dark. I feel like we need to protect him. I feel like he needs a yes. hug, and, and we need to buy him a beer. Get him a beer, and yeah. maybe another Porsche. It, a warm dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man Ooh. uh did, did they talk I, I, rollback has become this like almost fad I, I think in the fighting game world where everyone talks about it everyone wants every game to have rollback uh are you confident in like the net code and talking with the devs and and asking them about it because i know you did are you confident in them coming out with like rollback equivalent of whatever guilty gear is or whatever the best rollback is in the fighting sure. game is this game going to have it is it going to be similar is that the big yeah, question i mean i'm 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 fairly confident because a lot of the rollback issues that street fighter 5 had uh and just to just for absolute clarity street fighter 5 has rollback net code right it can run well but the issue with it is that they essentially designed it and this is the, the early days of like rollback in big main games um they designed it incorrectly at a fundamental level where it can like never be fixed oh. so they, they they essentially uh set themselves up for like a, a catastrophic failure with with the net play of street fighter 5 from like the beginning so they fixed a lot of those issues in mvci mvci actually has pretty good net code and it is an evolution of this one i'm pretty confident that the devs know what the issue is and the nice part is that there was just another capcom fighting game collection that was released that was made in-house at capcom mm -hmm. with new net code that does use rollback net code and it's good nice and that is the the capcom fighting collection that just came out like last week or so, something right exactly yeah yeah <clears throat> so i'm pretty i don't think it's going to be the same thing it probably won't be because it's a different engine this is the re engine that they're making stuff on i'm pretty confident that the net code is going to be fine right okay. it's, it's probably going to be completely usable and playable um the bigger news about it and what helps the netcode also be fine is the fact that i asked the devs about crossplay and they say yes we're gonna have crossplay nice. so it just to establish just in general 
Did they even get at launch. Oh wow. Okay. That's so, exciting. So just cool. to establish, this game's coming out on Xbox. It's coming out on PlayStation. It's coming out on PC. But it's not just that. It's coming out on previous gens as well. So this game is about to launch on more platforms than any Street Fighter game has had ever in its history. And more user base than any time a Street Fighter game has ever had accessibility to. So the crazy part is that that helps roll back netcode because once again, you have crossplay, you have more people to play with, right? Between every single platform, more chances for you to get better connections or people that aren't as far away where the rollback can be kind of snappy. Mm -hmm. And uh, more chances for people to that are new to eventually run into somebody that is of their skill level and not get their ass blown out by some guy that's a level 99 veteran because the game just can't match you with anybody else yeah yeah super quick before we continue we have a lot of people that may not normally play fighting games could you just briefly explain rollback what that means yes please yeah we, so we won't, i mean co could try but we'll fuck it up so let's have the fighting super, game guy do it <laughs> super easy layman's terms definition is that uh there's a couple different types of fighting game netcode a delay base and a rollback and a delay base means that the further somebody is away, the more your inputs are delayed. The game looks smooth, but when you press the button, then it comes out, right? And that's been like online fighting games for a very long time, pre like 2015, most games were like that. Rollback netcode is something that is a bit more CPU intense and hard to implement, but it makes it so that when you press your button, it comes out, right? Make sure that when both players are pressing their attack, it'll actually come out when you press it or very close to when you're pressing it. So that's why rollback netcode is really valuable. It means that it means that you'll actually be playing the game instead of fighting the online. Mm -hmm. And regardless of somebody's distance or potentially Wi-Fi in some situations, rollback can fix that problem, right? It's it's a solution to the fact that not everyone's internet is perfect or not everyone is going to be playing right next door to each other, you know? Yeah. So that's why that's why there's been a big um that's why I've been a big advocate and there's been a lot of people in the community that have been advocates and that's why Guilty Gear eventually got it, you know? And that's, that's it's, it's been, been insanely important for fighting games, especially in a post-pandemic, like, COVID world, where we can only play them online. Like, thank God, because th this was the thing that eventually got everybody on board, that you have to have this shit, because delay-based fighting games suck. Yeah. Like, they're really... They are, there's very few and far in between that are ever good, and that will always run into issues where if somebody's far away, you're essentially screwed. Yeah. C can you... Is it too long of a discussion to get into specifically what the rollback part means on like an advanced level? For because yes. people are still like, so, what does that what does that mean? What does rollback mean? So the the reason it's called rollback yeah. is because um, this is a a CPU intensive, essentially predictionary based netcode. Okay. Right. So just to break that down, because the game is going to essentially predict what your next input is and make an assumption that they know what you're going to do. Uh, and that seems crazy, but it's actually not. They've been doing this since like Unreal Tournament in the early 2000s, where they have to make an assumption that whatever input carries over is going to be the same input that was before if they're missing something. So long story short, if it's not the same thing, if something weird happens, it rolls back to what actually happened. So the, the game is constantly in a state this happens of in like... fractions of a second. This happens in 60 times a second, yeah. right? So the game is constantly in a state of predicting what is going to happen next. And then, oh, it didn't happen. We lost an input there, right? Something, some weird lag happened or something. We're going to roll back to what it was. But that'll happen within some, most of the time, within three frames. Three, three frames of 60 every second. So in many situations, if characters have like a lot of animation, it'll roll back to something and you won't even visually see it. Like... And, and then sometimes that the rollback's really bad and you have moves that are crazy quick, this move comes out in six frames. Well, if you lost the first three frames of animations in a six frame move, you just lost half the move, you'll see a big snap. Like the character will come out immediately. Luckily, not a lot of fighting games move that fast. <laughs> there's, like a nice, there's like a very big leeway of like how much time can happen. But this isn't, this isn't anything unique to fighting games like Modern Warzone uses this kind of so modern warfare 2019 uses rollback netcode for its multiplayer hmm. you know to sync the player state yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful videos that are online if you just if you just youtube rollback netcode to learn more about the specifics of it cool but it's a very cool like it was designed by the fighting game community it was designed by people that ran evo it's designed by the devs of project l they yeah. created rollback netcode for like fighting games 
Yeah. So it's very much rooted in the fact that, yeah, you're not really playing a fighting game anymore if your inputs are crazy delayed. And you're just sort of predicting what the person is going to do way in advance. And rollback netcode sort of fixes that. It allows you to actively play and react to what the other person is doing. Sure. Great explanation. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Have, have we had you on to talk about Project L at all? Because they, they showed some footage a while back. I don't know if we've had you on the show since then. We should wait till after Evo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When, wait, what, let, what's let's the date wait on like Evo? One, one month from now. Okay. Ish. That's Yeah. I mean, and we, okay. we might have something to talk about. So you're saying That's I should it. talk to my wife about something happening at <laughs> My wife works at Riot. Uh, if maybe if, if there's one place She's for project L to show up again secrets from me max and i need to know <laughs> if, if there's one spot that project l is going to show up this year uh evo 2022 is it okay and that's that's because the the brothers that run the event and have been responsible for it yeah, are yeah. also the lead designers of project l and right. they promised us an update this year after showing the game was going to be like a tag team sort of like fighting game many moons ago now yeah. so um it, it, this is the one this is the time this is they it, don't say they don't much. say they yeah, ship this for game it. awards this is the time <laughs> yeah yeah uh very excited to see what that is just because i i think <clears throat> if street fighter like if street fighter 6 and and project l are the two big fighting games coming up uh, should be a good time for fighting games <laughs> moving forward and we still don't know what the heck nether has been working on that's They've true yeah that shit up big secret yeah what what are the rumors flying around with that is it the next mortal Kombat? are they doing like some dc x crossover like what what's going on with that pretty much that mortal Kombat. okay like a, a lot of a lot of the big prominent leakers and industry folks have pretty much said that it's mortal Kombat. okay uh, mortal Kombat 12 and they're seemingly skipping uh injustice 3 uh but right. i secretly uh, i have a deep hope that it's not just mortal Kombat right there's been a lot of other rumors of what it can be and i have some i have some personal like fingers crossed that it's you know something actually different and crazy i think will still be a fighting game but i i i have some personal hopes that it's not just mk12 because that's kind of expected at this point yeah yeah that's exciting that's their, that's their golden goose right there i mean they know that would be successful they know it would make them sure. money I mean, I'm not even sure. a fighting game fan, and I always at least get the Mortal Kombat's to play through the main story. Oh, you yeah, know, the last absolutely. one was like a yeah. freaking movie. Everybody does. It was, it was awesome gorgeous. Yeah, it was yeah. so good. Yeah, that that was... Uh, so. I remember we both got sponsored stream for that, and we're just like, yeah. No, yeah. We're going to do it was that. fun, dude. That's it the easiest great. sponsorship ever. <laughs> yeah, just oh, play for the sure. game experience. I, I did my sponsored thing, and then the next day jumped on and finished it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, there's no way I'm not going to finish this. Like, it's, this is awesome. It's yeah. dumb fun. It's always a good time. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's, in, it's uh, that, that's why I keep saying like other fighting game devs have tried to do NRS style story modes and they're just never as good. Yeah. I'm like these guys d don't stop. Just please just do something different, which is why I'm glad Street Fighter 6 is doing a world tour, something different because they did it. They did an NRS style story mode in Street Fighter 5 and it was fucking awful. It was, it, I, I'm playing through it again right now. Oh god. It is so bad. Is it still like, text based? Yeah. Where like there's no spoken no, dialogue? No, it was a big cinematic. <laughs> Street Fighter 5 had a big cinematic story mode about bison blocking out the moon with a techno moon. That wasn't yes, there at launch, right? I the, remember I played it that. Post launch. Oh, it wasn't okay. there at launch. It came out post launch what the and fuck? it is the it is so bad. <laughs> like it's it's way worse than it was in 2016. It's even <laughs> worse now. I can't I can't believe how bad it is. How long is it? Is it sh is it pretty short to run through it? It's it's like five six hours. Okay, it's about the same uh, length as like an NRS style story mode. I had no idea that there was a bison and the moon and all that. I can just not imagine anything. I can just imagine Max like I hope it's something different. And then you know the 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 reveal starts. It's like Mortal Kombat, and Max just breathes it out. And then all of a sudden it's like colon the new open world rpg it's like, <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> oh and it's like it's from six there. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like if they did even a shaolin i don't know if you ever played shaolin monks which was like oh, a yeah. beat em up where Back luke kang and where, yeah that, that game's amazing yeah that was it was luke kang was it sub-zero was the other person you played as you could play a Sub Zero and Scorpion. It was it was Liu Kang and Kung Lao. Oh, it Kung was Lao, like okay. the Shaolin monks right, are gonna go right, whoop right, ass. Right, 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 Wasn't right. there like a Sub Zero only Mortal Kombat? That's game? what I'm thinking. Yes, of. we don't talk about that. Oh, okay, that's oh. that's when we don't talk. About. Yes, got it, got it. We, just, we, we do not talk about Sub Zero mythologies, and I definitely have never played it <laughs> and died a billion times. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, is, that's weird because I could have sworn I remembered. It. I guess not. I yeah, guess it maybe it didn't, no, it didn't exist. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like it's weird. like the Strange. it's like the weird. second Devil May Cry. They just skipped it for some reason. They went. Straight to yeah, they just went right from one to three. Very weird. Yeah. I tell yeah. you, something it happens. Just can't be explained. It happens in video games. Yeah. That's how it goes. Uh, is that? Do you think Mortal Kombat something we see at Evo as well? Is is that a possibility? <laughs> um, unfortunately, no. Yeah. Like uh, for for like the bigger like WB announcements and Bandai Namco and Capcom announcements, they'll they'll, they'll probably for like brand new game announcements. Evo's kind of small for that. Okay, uh, it's still a huge event. So adding like new characters and things like that, that's where you show that shit off. Mm. But most of the time, if you're talking like a brand new WB marketing effort, that's going to be some Game Awards shit. Sure, that's going to be like we have a big CG trailer for Game Awards and then a big reveal a month later. Which yeah. was what they did for MK MK11. So if there's if there's a spot this year where we might see what NRS is working on, which at that point will have been four years since Mortal Kombat 11. Damn. Um, it's going to be Game Awards. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, you're you're bringing up the cogwheels keep spinning. Uh, Evo's obviously gone through some changes in the the past couple of years. Uh, oh, yeah. How like is is this the what what is the general thought of evo coming up are like people super excited for it are they like how's this gonna go what what are we gonna what are we gonna see here what what's the general uh idea around it i think it's i mean it's the first time evo is going to be back in like in person in person in vegas again yeah i will not be attending this year just because uh i I, i'm still not going to like big events like very big events like that as uh, until like things just calm down and my daughter gets a vaccination in some way so but the people that are in charge of Evo are very different than a few years the, of the past. And um, the dude that was a, a, a previous Twitch employee, also ran Combo Breaker, Rick, is essentially running a lot of like the events side of Evo now. And it sounds very cool. cool. Like the things that he is setting up for and making playable uh, in terms of what Evo has been before sounds very cool. Yeah. So it, it seems fun, right? I think we're sort of like waiting for... Um, waiting for more announcements and things like that because we already know the games that are going to be there which is a pretty healthy amount of games mm-hmm. it should be good like I'm, I'm expecting there to be big game announcements and you know stuff like that maybe not the biggest ones like nrs or bandai namco showing tekken 8 or anything like that but I, I do think that there will definitely be some substantial stuff along with having like a really good tournament so i'll be i'll be watching it from home this year sure and, and the help me out it's playstation <laughs> playstation owns evo right sure and yeah, then, Sony does. And then Pokimane's company is helping. What, how does Pokimane fit into Because I saw that headline. Yeah, Co. Pokimane's involved in this, but I don't know yeah. at what level. Like, it's her company. It's it's someone in her company. I, I, think, I think, like, there's, like, a financial involvement in some way. Okay. Right? I don't, but I, it, it, uh, is she, like, running it and making decisions? Probably not. I, I legit don't know, and I don't know why that would even be the case in general. Yeah. So... I, I, I that yeah that's news from like a year ago it's it's cool i mean neat <laughs> like, that's great yeah but what is it what's what is it beyond that like i don't know exactly i really couldn't tell you yeah so okay but in in, in general it's like a, it's a sony run event where it's not just sony games from what i understand mm. and the the cool part about it is that playstation 5 fighting games have sort of had issues over the past couple of years in general they have a lot of input delay Mm. um and the unreal engine is the culprit of that on ps5 for some reason unreal engine on ps5 has a lot of input delay and of course now we got a new tournament right where you're going to be playing on sony hardware in almost right. every fashion possible and those games technically play the worst on sony hardware um and that's kind of caused sony to contact epic and be like hey uh fighting games on our systems are not, are not running great can we do something and epic games is like yeah we're looking into it so that's that's, that's been a, a really nice net positive about the Sony situation is that now that there's like a tandem and a relationship there, Unreal is looking into their engine to sort of fix those input delay issues because devs, almost every fighting game has this problem. Got it. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's good. That's uh, our, our fighting game correspondent, Max, is here quarterly. That's his report. Quarterly. <laughs> the FGC <laughs> is strong. We'll check in next quarter. It seems like 2023 yeah, exactly. is going to be a pretty insane fighting game year. It will. Yeah. It, it seems, will. It seems like there's going to be a lot with between Project L potentially seeing more. We've got new Street Fighter, whatever NetherRealm is up to. It seems like it could be a pretty crazy year. Uh, so at least my hitbox will get some going on. out of it. I'm, I'm excited to pull that thing out of the the drawer and dust the get all the dust <laughs> off of that uh, after 
occurred after the Guilty Gear maying that occurred. Uh, what else has been going? I guess we, we could talk a little Final Fantasy. I, you had a good... Uh, I felt like this E3, or not E3, uh, is really what I've been calling it, was tailored for you, Max, because they did all the Street Fighter stuff. Swear to God. And then, uh, and then they went crazy with this, uh, this Final Fantasy uh, nonsense that came out um, with yeah. kind of a weird... Like, they kind of underplayed or, or underhyped, I think, this stream. They just said, like, yeah, we'll have 10 minutes of Final Fantasy stuff. You can come check it out. And then they just, like, showed a ton of stuff. And uh, yeah, you, you but were like very fun to watch. Every voice actor and everyone was, like, FF7 associated on Twitter was, like, watch. You need to watch. <laughs> like, so there, you, there was you were significantly like... hyped going into it, then. Yeah, there there was enough there's enough big names and producers and you know English side Square Enix people that were like you need to watch this like type of stuff happening on Twitter that got me pretty excited. Yeah. And luckily like it was it was a roller coaster ride of what they first were showing and it was like oh my god are we really going to spend time on this? Yeah. Then it ended up being like an insanely valuable 10 minutes where it's like damn that was better than like some E3 shows in general. So yeah, I was I was pretty satisfied by the end of it to say the least. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, where, where to begin? I'm, I'm, we already talked about the clip, uh, of us. Who was it that predicted the name in full? Was it, was it Co or was it Max? Oh, I got the domain and Max is the one okay. that came up with the name. Do you still have the domain? Yeah, point? I, mean, and I just said rebirth. I said rebirth and reunion. Okay. I think, yeah. I think, I think Strippin said reunion. I don't My remember. Was it you on both of them? Was, I, was, I think, I think we were on the same page. Yeah. I think it was you like, guys were. Yeah. I yeah. think we're both of us were like Rebirth or Reunion or what do you call the next games. Yeah. And funny enough, we were right, kinda. Kinda. Because <laughs> yeah. so Reunion think, is one of them. Yeah, oh, I think you guys both nailed it. I mean, I mean, the Reunion is definitely it's the Crisis Core remake. So yes. it, 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 and honestly, like we were saying before the show, if Reunion was not going to be for the Crisis Core remake, it probably would have been the third game. So yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's all, it's all going to be very That'd interesting. And now, of course, sense. yeah. And now, of course, the big question is why is it not called Crisis Core? remake you know what what's the reunion part and are we going to get like a remake style ending it's so funny yeah. for... <laughs> i co so, says that and i see max's eyebrow go whoop <laughs> I, I see him so, here he is and the deep breath and here we go <laughs> Jump so, on the train. I, I mean it's the the craziest part is that the devs actually came out and said it where they're like nomura specifically is like i can't wait to tell you why we have titled the games the way we have and i'm like well, we know. Don't worry, Nomura. We know. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, yeah, the, and there, it actually causes a bit of confusion. Where a lot of people were confused what the heck Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is, and I'm like, it's remake part two. They're like, oh, why didn't they just call it that? And I'm like, <laughs> because Final Fantasy VII Remake, its title isn't technically referring to what the game is. It's referring to the intentions of a character, which are practically revealed in a very nonchalant way by the end of the game. And that that's sort of a confusing marketing thing because people are like, now, wait a minute, it's not called remake part two, like, and I can I can understand because yeah, not everybody is on board with what the hell is actually going on in this game in the game's story yeah. and what they're setting up for the future. So like, not having the remake part two like Monikier is 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 sort of damaging because now people are kind of confused where it's like you have to explain no rebirth is part two, you know. What so I, I that's still think weird. that was such a mistake. Like it, I, 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 I think that te calling a game remake when that is an industry term meaning something specific yeah. that could be what Final Fantasy VII remake was, but it's not at all. So that just like it just it, it's created so much. It, it is it is weird some extra non issues. Fuck. Yeah, like a marketing it's some yeah. extra. It's thing, extra yeah. weird. Exactly, it's a marketing buzzword, and more importantly, remake means something that Final Fantasy VII remake is simply not. It is not yes. a remake. So to call yes. it Final Fantasy VII Remake is just, just it's like, still a remake. It is still a remake, but that's not what this is referring to. In the same way that you see on screen, <laughs> Rebirth is not referring to Part Two being a rebirth of the world of Final Fantasy. Sure, it could be interpreted as that, but it's not that. It's definitely referring to something else. It's referring to a story thing specifically, oh, which is man. why the third one won't be called like Part Three or something like that. Like it's going to be called like like you were mentioning like Requiem or Return. All the names and titles are referring to like a, a, a coming back to life or born anew type of thing. And I mean, I hate to be spoiler to the first one. They're all referring to Sephiroth. Like yeah. all, all of these are referring to the intentions or what is happening to Sephiroth. 
Because he, I mean, he's so well. The thing, the thing that, and, and again, should we put up a spoiler mostly, tag for this? I, so we just. I mean, don't, if you've seen this, like if people, I, uh, it's, it's tough. It's, gonna, it's a couple years old now. I'm gonna put it up yeah. just to just to be proactive about case, it. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry. But the thing, the thing, and and we've we've had this we've had this discussion so many times in my channel, as I'm sure you probably have too, Max. But yeah, the thing that's interesting about this is like 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 when you say like Final Fantasy remake, you would assume it's a remake of of Final Fantasy VII. Absolutely. But the thing is, is the more you play it, the more you think about it, the more, especially when you factor in these next two projects, it's not really a remake at all. It's actually a sequel that just uses yes. the same content of Seven. It's not. Yes. A, that's the thing. It's not a remake. It's a it's sequel. fucking they call it a remake. Is what it is. It is. It, oh, it absolutely is. Shit. It's a complete yeah. mind. I'm gonna. You know what? Fuck, I'm gonna say it. it's a complete mind. Fuck. It is. It's a complete because yes. it, it like completely. It 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 gives you intentions that are inaccurate, and then it like it almost does it specifically so it can give you the finger at the end. Like you thought you knew what you were getting, but you <laughs> yeah. didn't. And it's and like people, and, and that and almost that, makes the whole a, thing that, better in some ways. I don't know. It it's a dangerous road because the purists are like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <that was> crazy, <laughs> yeah. like you're yeah. freaking mad, yeah. dude. You know there was a meeting when somebody was like, you know what this is gonna do, right? It's like it's like when, it's yeah. like that meeting when the good guys are discussing using the dark power, where it's like <laughs> you know what's gonna happen when they yeah. see yeah. this game called that, remake, and, right? and you know and here's that's when here's Namora's the sitting at the end of the table in an all black suit and all dark yeah! smoking a cigarette. And do it. <laughs> yeah. They, they have to know. They have to know that those ramifications are going to be severe, but if if that's the case, there has to be something that's worth it. There has to be there have to be setting up for something that is like worth it. In the same way that Crisis Core, essentially, um, and this is I'm gonna not try to not spoil this as much as possible. Crisis Core is a huge entire game spoiler of a giant Act Three revelation in the original Final Fantasy VII. The whole game is a huge spoiler of that of a very big moment so the fact that they're they're releasing crisis core uh, uh, intending that people that like ff7 remake should play crisis core you should know the story of zach yeah that is that is a huge act three spoiler that people are going to be aware of going into part two of the remake yep. so whatever they got going is worth sacrificing that big plot point right Whatever they got going forward will actually like subvert an expectation in a way that makes that even worth it. Which switches it from a plot point to a foundational element that is going to be something that they're going to yes. probably build off or you more importantly use as connective material. So like exactly. the, the interesting thing is it's it's almost and, and again we were talking about this a little bit before the show, it's almost like it they're staging reunion to be to have rebirth be the sequel to that as well. So it's it, it could actually be that perhaps remake and crisis core are kind of going in parallel and they both kind of end up at the same place before rebirth. So all yeah. of a sudden we have like two games that are feeding into the foundational information of this brand new, but also comfy because it has a lot of the stuff we know in it, yep. like weird smorgasbord. <laughs> there's a, there's a very good reason why it's got the same, the same uh, subtitle. Uh, subtitle methodology the re something re remake rebirth reunion because it is now a part of this right it is now like it isn't like dirge of cerberus which is its own separate thing or advent children which is its own separate thing of the compilation of final fantasy 7 no now final fantasy 7 crisis core reunion now joins final fantasy 7 remake as a full storytelling element so well, there is it going to be a remake remaster of Crisis Core? Yeah, we can. We're literally seeing it on screen right now. It's Crisis Core, but it looks way better, right? Yeah. Everything yeah. is everything is seemingly better than the original Crisis Core. Hopefully, gameplay stuff will be better because that's what needs the most work, and and that that'll be fun, right? It'll be fun to revisit this stuff and understand a bit more what happened. But it's like they're assuming that you're going to know this. They're they're putting out this game knowing that going into the next game, you're going to have this information. And as Ko is saying, yeah, I think it's going to tie right in. I think it's, it's like, almost like homework. <laughs> yes, like, it is. It is. It, it, what it is, it's, it's homework, there to wet yeah. your whistle while you got to wait for the next game. True. Yeah. yeah. And by the time it's it's that little that little bump to not only carry you there, but also probably start threading in again that super important foundational stuff that's just going to mean so much more by the time we get to rebirth. So I got to admit, yeah. I'm like 
I'm already thinking of all the crazy ways they're going to change the end of this remake style. Or if they aren't at all, and it's going to be like one scene at the end that all of a sudden joins them. Like it's, are we going to get an entire remake style rejiggering of the end to where it fits I mean, into the puzzle or is it going to be like so they tell the oh, middle of the Lord. game and then at the end they they do the same thing again. are we going to see the same weird anomalies that we saw throughout remake in crisis yeah. core so it's going to be For like a little be, so all you know like are we going to see all the the, the 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 forum trolls whatever you wanted to call them at the end yeah. that are like trying yeah. to keep the game canon and nomura's sitting and there I, with his, I would say his chair that... and whip like a lion no you're going my direction <laughs> Like <laughs> it, it would be really disappointing because everything. I mean, this is a spoiler mode, and we're in spoiler alert, right? So, yeah. in in a big spoiler fashion, the entirety of Crisis Core is designed storytelling wise, and it it's not great for most of the game, unfortunately. Like half of half of Crisis Core is pretty brutal, um, but it does have a great main character that eventually bites the dust, and they build up the entire game for that. Right. The whole game is designed to build up the fact that this character is not going to make it and how how fucking sad that is. Again, so spoilers, it's an heiress situation. Like, again, like spoilers, it, it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By building up by how sad that is, that that has to happen. You know, this this is this is also just still gonna be crisis court through and through. But what happens after that, like, is still what we're we don't know is going on with with remake anymore. So I think there's gonna be even more stuff. And we even saw at the end of the Yuffie DLC, we're really confused what's going on now. Um, so how it, is this character still alive? I was gonna say, do you okay? Real, real talk here, Max. Are they gonna kill Zach in reunion? I don't think so. I, I think he's alive too. somehow, somewhere. Yep, um, I'm in that boat too. Time, time jannies and stuff like that. I, I, I think personally, there's two timelines. Um, time, time jannies blowing up and you killing fate essentially screwed up everything and in one reality he lived somehow uh but it's it's my it's my personal hope that they treat him like a laguna situation in final fantasy 8 and for anyone that doesn't remember that uh there's there's you play as another character in final fantasy 8 every once in a while when your character falls asleep yeah and the main character of FF8 isn't that interesting, but this other dude, when you fall asleep and wake up as him, is kind of interesting. And he's going on his own adventure and stuff like that. You're like two paralleling adventures. I think that's what they're going to do. I think that you're not going to... Um, I think that you're not going to play as Cloud like the whole time, but you're going to separate that adventure a little bit as Zack doing a similar thing. I think like the goal will be getting... like they'll, they'll have similar goals on their adventures, but they'll just be carrying them out in completely different ways. So you can still tell the original Final Fantasy VII and then also get little sneak peeks of what the hell is Zack still alive somewhere doing something? What's going on there? Because there's already a very big... At the end of the Yuffie DLC, there's already a very big hint that Aerith is dead. And, and Zach, where, wherever Zack is alive, Aerith might be dead. So... Which could be know. our original timeline, where Zack died yeah. and Aerith died. So it, it's kind Something of interesting like because that. one of, one of the things um, I was thinking about that would be so we don't we have of course the antagonist we have Sephiroth we have him doing everything in his power to adjust the chi timeline what we don't really have is an overt protagonist of course we have Cloud and everything which is the obvious choice for the person fighting against Sephiroth but what if there's someone behind the scenes on the level of Sephiroth that's trying to battle Sephiroth with the timey wimey stuff that Sephiroth is using and what if they're doing that. By trying to bring alter the timeline for the positive for Cloud to be able to actually conquer Sephiroth. So while Sephiroth is behind the scenes, like trying to do all this timey wimey stuff for him, what if there's a yet unknown protagonist that's like trying to keep Zack alive to help Cloud and maybe doing something with Aerith to keep her going so that they can actually like counteract with Sephiroth? And like, I think that's like I think I think our antagonist behind the scenes is Genova. Like it, it, overall, like the, the big bad guy is Genova, right? And it, I think it's also Sephiroth at this point because Sephiroth is like one with Genova. Um, here, here's my like Genova's will. huge prediction as far as where we're going and how this stuff is going to work out. You're, you're going to play as Cloud on his adventure throughout like a lot of the game, right? And, and you're essentially going to ver mimic a very similar experience to the original Final Fantasy VII of going to the northern crater or something like that maybe in part two i think it'll actually go that far by the way i think it'll i think it'll go all the way to the northern crater i think it'll be big that's um, a big game but then that's zach, case, yeah. yeah and then zach 
because this for development wise makes a lot of sense we're going going on a very similar adventure in a different way with a different party you know where he might not have the exact same people but cloud might be working with him right the cloud could be like obviously still friends with zach and a mercenary for hire just like he is but zach is the party leader you know in that timeline and the cloud's a completely different character at that point too because cloud doesn't think he's friggin zach so they're going on their own adventure um so it's my it's my prediction that you have these two timelines that are sort of like you know back to the future toing it where you're, where you're they're going towards very similar results um but at some points there's no more time jannies to keep anything like uh, there's no more time jannies to t- keep things like in check there's no fate things things are going to cross over where it's like some some characters are just going to get hints that you know, zach's alive somewhere else like he he made it it's just that you can't like contact him and i think there's going to be you know moments that you're just going to get little hints Bridges. of that throughout the rest of the game like that'll cross over in some ways. Hmm. We'll see. I like it, man. I like it. I also, <laughs> I we haven't really talked about it yet, but I really liked your idea about the actual mechanics and the layout of Rebirth and the third one. Yeah. That, I actually, I, ever since I heard that, it made me kind of to the point where I will be angry if it doesn't do that because of how cool that sounds. Yeah. Well, uh, what I, think, mean, I don't know if JP has heard that. If you want to go over that a little bit, yeah. What was that? Like the, the, open the, the world the, 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 aspect the, or. Yeah. Open world aspect so, of the kaiju battles, but he'll so, yeah, my, 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 my big prediction <laughs> gameplay wise, right? Uh-huh. Uh, gameplay wise, part two, especially in combat, is that you'll get every character, right? You'll have like an active switch system yeah. that uses the PHS, which is from the original game, where at any, uh, depending on your ATB or something, you'll be able to swap out to other characters. That makes a lot of sense. Sure. And you'll also be able to do team attacks with other characters like you could in the Yuffie DLC, which sounds great. You just get access to any character at any point instead of just three. Yeah, why not? Um, but part two, it's kind of like a wide linear sort of very large zone adventure not maybe like open world not like you have to drive a car everywhere when the, everything's not empty ff15 yeah yeah don't have to do that you just have like oh yeah it's a progression it's a progression game through the world where you're sort of limited by uh geographical things until you get a vehicle and it gets you around those geographical things and you make progress just like the original ff7 you know um and then part 2 i think is going to go all the way to the northern crater um and then part three begins with meteors being called right you're sort of like you begin the game with clouds missing presumed dead and you are at at the attack on junion harbor and it's the first weapon right the kaijus and that part two essentially starts off with you getting an airship and now you have a completely new gameplay mechanic method of traversal an airship full world adventure where we have to go take out these kaijus. I mean, part is there. Is this part three or part everything. two? This is, I think, this is part three. Part, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, you said yeah. Part two. This is part three. Gotcha. And what else does part three do? Well, obviously, like, there's a lot of really cool things in the original FF7 that you do as a player that you don't have to make side quests anymore, which is all the materia caves, which is Knights of the Round, right? Sure. And summoning this crazy power that the Cetra had to protect themselves from, you know, space, uh, space laser alien chicks that want to ruin the planet right so make that part of the story make knights of the round part of the story make like the story in part three about we have to go scour the world for this ancient materia and power to take out these kaijus and that'll in turn help us take out sephiroth which we eventually have to do after the kaijus are gone yeah wait so that's when part three becomes a globe trotting adventure to take out these huge monsters and to also build enough materia and power and, and get the power of the cetra to go take out sephiroth my memory is hazy because it's Cool. I'm not going to say how long it's been years wise, but it's been a while. Didn't the wasn't Knights of the Round you had to breed a white chocobo or was that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you had to breed a gold chocobo. <laughs> gold chocobo. That's tri- what it was. To, to travel to a certain part certain of the planet island. that only a yeah. chicken could get to. Yes. <laughs> and dude, keep that part of the story. Hell yeah. <laughs> there's like, there's myths that the Cetra could only access this place with a mythical golden chicken. <laughs> like hell yeah why let's not? go Fuck like make it. that part of the story sure let's keep it weird keep it weird uh do it <laughs> let me ask you this how how far are you willing to go max to get the story like are you gonna play if we're five years from now two's been out okay and now square's like guys mobile games they're really big if you have to play through like two mobile games to get the full story for final fantasy 7 whatever they're calling this thing are you doing it or yeah. is are you gonna is this a youtube video rewatch? like how far do you go 
Oh, you mean in like in like replaying the older ones or just no, 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 just like the new they, mobile games. If if they just put new mobile games out there, they announce a new mobile game that's like crucial to the story, a la Kingdom Hearts. Like, are you going and that one of, path? One of them is a new VR, deep? and the second is a gotcha game. <laughs> sure, yeah, they could. You know, we could go the distance with it if you want to. You're Co. not that far crazy. off, Co. Because <laughs> the other the other Final Fantasy VII remake mobile games, which are essentially just remaking FF Seven and Crisis Core in a completely different game than this, yeah, are gotcha games. Yeah. Oh, really? And there are there are, there are mobile games where the gotcha part is costumes and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's already game. happening. And one was already a BR game. Yeah, I remember so the, was BR, I know the BR soldier. game. I yeah. I was actually lurking your stream when you did the sponsored look at the BR game, and I I I it was it was uh that was an interesting stream to say the least. Um, it's an interesting game to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there story the, stuff uh, in that BR game? Or is it just a BR? No, okay. well, that, there is so. technically, no. but mm, sure, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you can it's take the, it or leave it. Yeah. It's like I wouldn't say lore; I'd say world building. Like it gives you yes. peeks at different parts of the world and how they would function slash do function, but they only function that way for the context of making the game work. So it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> you it. know, it's yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So Max, you'll go the distance, then you'll play the the mobile stuff. I definitely would. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you're the like the, you're the super fan, right? You're the, you're the target uh, audience for this, right? Pretty so. much. Like uh, the, the cool thing about they're called it's called Final Fantasy Ever Crisis. Okay. And it it is essentially a one to one remake of the OG FF7 static camera and all, but the battle system is still a turn based battle system, but it visually looks like remake. Mm. So it looks like a relatively high budget mobile game. And it's like, damn, this seems pretty cool. Like, that's what a lot of people were asking for. A lot of people just wanted OG FF7, but looks better. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what that is, is what you're seeing right now. Yeah. Characters are chibi in style, but they look better. It's just a remake of one to one remake of the old game, a one to one remake of Crisis Core but with a turn based battle system. I'm like, this seems really, I actually hope this comes to consoles eventually. It seems really cool. But, you know. I, I, it, it, it seems like more stuff that's just going to come out in between now and rebirth that'll be there to like the wet your whistle tissue. on the way to the new stuff yeah yeah uh does this have a, this. like all these pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff this is neat does this have a release date tied to it does ever crisis have a a launch period date anything no like that? okay I, I think i think there's a beta for it this year okay got it yeah, I, I'd, I'd only seen this trailer once during the, like, actual reveal stream that they did. I have not watched it a second time, but you're right. Yeah. It, looks, it looks fine, right? Like, it looks... You can see Cloud's wearing different different gear here. Yeah. So is Aerith. Like, characters have different costumes. That'll most likely be part of the gotcha element of the game. Oh, okay. But yeah, like, like similar to OG FF7, you got these chibi-looking weird characters in the world map. And then you go to battle and they're like normal proportion, like remake looking characters. It's the same way the OG FF7 was. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll definitely have to bring you back on, uh, I guess, as some of this stuff comes out. Uh, is the ever, <laughs> the, the continuing of Final Fantasy VII, what, what do they call, are we calling it the, the remaking of the Okay, like what remaking. Are we, we got we to think here, of like a core name for whatever remaking? all of this is. There needs to okay, so be remake, it. rebirth, uncommon or unnamed reproject and reunion. So what what is the name of this entire of the universe? Thing? Like what are, yeah. It's 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 the it Final Fantasy VII reimagining, uh re It has an official it's be name. Re something, right? Oh, it does. It, it it does have a name and it, it it's actually back from the mid 2000s when Advent Children came out. It's called the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. Got it. Okay. And here's here's the weird Doesn't part that, that the devs the literally they they literally said this that Final Fantasy VII remake when they when they planned this was actually these games were actually planned back in the mid two thousands, but Square was in a rough spot and they couldn't do it on the PlayStation Two. Mm. So really? these games were already part of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, which is why they're reintroducing Crisis Core, which is why there's already characters from the compilation that are in remake. Like it, it is a continuing of their compilation of Final Fantasy VII. They just were able to do it now. So the so the compilation involves the original, right? So like it's all uh, yeah. Well, it involves thing. the original. It involves uh, Dirge of Cerberus, Advent Crisis Children. Core, Advent yeah. Children, and a little game called uh, Jesus. What was the mobile game called? Chat's gonna know what the hell we're talking. It was Sub Zero about. Anthologies. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was a mobile game at the, before, before crisis. crisis. It was a mobile yeah. game in the mid 2000s about Turks and what the Turks do. And it, it, it revealed before a lot crisis? of story about what Avalanche yeah. is. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. Oh, huh. Interesting. I missed is, that one completely. Is that is it? Is that going to get remade? <laughs> See, it was literally crisis. at the beginning. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It was yeah. literally at the beginning of that 10 minute presentation. They start off with before crisis. I'm like, what the hell am I looking at, dude? Oh, it it's will a be an ever crisis. 2006. Okay. You got to admit, I really liked um, a few people in chat said this. I it, it does seem like the new like remake rebirth reunion. See, it feels like they need a bit of their own subsection. Like, like yes. they're just so different somebody in chat said reverse and i the think reverse. that like like That's universe but re like reverse like the reverse resident collection. evil just did that yeah uh, i think oh, i like that yeah. i like that okay it's like, oh that is true didn't they yeah yeah balls capcom yeah capcom kind of took that okay well resell oh, that's a good one namora is really good with <laughs> names so i'm sure i'll put one out there if the compilation oh of yeah fancy seven uh isn't wordy enough he'll he'll make something He'll make magic. Yeah, yeah. Nomura. Nomura's like off the project. He's is working he? on Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, it was it was always presumed that he didn't have a lot of involvement in part one. Um, that this one dude, which is from uh Final Fantasy, geez, what is it called? Not Origins, not uh Mobius. There was a guy, there was a guy that was lead director for a game that? called Final Fantasy Mobius that was a uh, a lead director that was the co-director of, of remake part one. And now is the main director of part two. And Nomura has sort of been moved to this, like, I'm just like a creative overseer yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. It was. It, no, was, not was, Morbius chat. Calm down. There was no Mo R. Mobius. Mobius. Mobius is what it's called. Yeah. It was Mobin time. Not Morbin time. Not Morbin uh, Mobin time. There anyway, he, he's now like the lead dude uh, that is running remake part two. And considering that there was already like 95% uh, of remake part one felt not really no Murian until like 5% <laughs> shows up. No it was really assumed, no like, this doesn't really feel like a no Murian game. It doesn't. It, it really doesn't feel no Murian until like some spots rear that. their heads. You're God like, damn, damn no, no Murian shit is kicking in. <laughs> I hate that. So, so I don't know. God damn it. Um, you've willed that into existence now, Max. And that's, it's no Murian. <laughs> that's what it is. No Murian. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Well, that's that's our uh, very brief uh, thirty minutes on on Final Fantasy and and the FGC recap. Uh, let's take a break. My dog, I think, needs to go out or something, and they started to bite my feet. So I'm going to take a break and save my feet, uh, and we'll come back and probably spend about an hour, hour and fifteen on uh, everything else. We've got a little bit of news. There's some Twitch news as well. They announced some new product uh, this past week. We'll talk about that. Talk about uh, site wide moderating list moderation list that was one of the things they announced that should be a fun conversation uh so we'll do all that when we come back with more drop frames right after this we'll see you guys in about five or six minutes 